On the build show today, the number one biggest HVAC system mistake. This is part rant, part building science education, and probably part apology too, because honestly, I've made this mistake before. Let's get going. Here we go. The number one biggest HVAC system mistake is this, ducts on the outside of your house. I mean, this is ridiculous. Why would we possibly put ductwork on the outside of the house? Now, before you say, of course, I would never do that, Matt. How many times have you seen this before? New construction, fluffy stuff on the ceiling, and then some silver ducts outside of that. I'll be honest, this is a little bit more of a southern issue than it is a northern issue. But for the last, I don't know, six or seven decades, here's some... I don't know, this 50s house, 60s house. Uh, they've been doing this all over the place. Now, the other place we see this a lot, though, in the South is crawl spaces, not just attics. Crawl spaces where the fluffy stuff's at the floor line, but then the ductwork is below that. Not only that, I mean, with this fluffy stuff up here and this duct right here, this is just as bad especially because we'll often see pooling water and all kinds of other nastiness in a crawl space. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many disgusting crawl spaces I've been in the Northeast as well. Now, the Northern builders, you do get a bit of a pass on this sometimes by a uh, happy accident, by having full in-ground basements. By having that full basement, putting your mechanical systems in the basement, all of your ductwork is inside the house. It's inside the envelope. It's inside the air barrier. It's within the fluffy stuff on the house. And that makes a huge difference, uh, both for having some mechanical space, but also I'm gonna tell you in a second the building science behind why it's really dumb to put ducts outside of your condition space. But let's back up for a second and say why this happens in the South. In the South, we often do slab on grade construction. And that's for two reasons. Number one, we have a lot of rock down here. But number two, we don't have the frost line requirements like you guys in the north do. I mean, frost lines, uh, depending on how far north you go, could be as low as 36 or maybe even, I think the lowest is 42 inches. I may be wrong. Connect me, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. In the south here, we don't have that frost issue. And we also have a lot of rock, which means crawl spaces and slab on grade is typically how we build throughout the whole south and a little bit into the california pacific northwest even on brand new construction today now let's look at why ducks out of the condition space is a problem check out this drawing here's a house the green line here is representing the outer envelope of the house so this is the line that's the air barrier and then obviously the fluffy stuff is gonna go on top of that air barrier or sheetrock on the ceiling. And inside a typical house, uh, you're gonna see, let's say 70 degrees and 50% relative humidity. Attic spaces, especially in the summertime, can get really hot. It's not unusual, and I've been in many attics where it's 130 up in the attic, and you might see uh, humidities in the 70% or maybe even higher, which means that those ducts are running through a very inhospitable place. If we do the math real quick, let's, uh, let's do the math in black right here. If my air that's inside my system is at 55 degrees and that attic's at 130, so 130 minus 55, uh, that's a 75 degree delta. 75 degrees, delta, and T for temperature. That means between the ductwork and the outside of the ductwork is a 75 degree differential. That's a huge differential. And typically ducts and attics are something like R6 or R8, whereas the fluffy stuff down here uh, at the base of the attic could be, you know, R38 is code for me here in Austin, Texas. It might be even higher for some other folks. That ductwork is real, real thin, and this is really dumb from an energy efficiency perspective. But even more importantly, it's dumb from a condensation perspective. Everybody's had that glass of cold water that condenses. Even though my studio today is fairly cold, it's not particularly uh, a huge delta between the glass of ice at 32 degrees. I've got huge condensation happening on this glass. 
And that's exactly what happens in our ductwork. The other thing that happens when we put our ductwork outside of the condition envelope, outside of the air barrier, is we have some loss from that ductwork. The cabinet itself, the, fire, the furnace box, the AC box, is a leaky device. And the ductwork where it connects also has some amount of leakage. Even new construction is typically around 5% leakage. Existing houses, older houses, you might see 20, 25, even 30% duct leakage as standard. Which means that if I've got 1,000 CFM running through this system and I have 5% leakage, that's 50 CFM lost into my hot attic. And that's what these squiggly blue lines are representing right here. That's cold air squiggling out of the house. And how is that air going to be made up? It's going to be made up with these red lines. We might have some air leakage underneath the bottom plate. We might have some air leakage through our windows and doors. And even worse, we might have some air leakage around those ceiling registers in our house. And let's take a look at that from a real world example. Let's go up into an attic on a typical house in the south that has fluffy stuff at the ceiling line and ductwork up there. This is what we might see. Uh, standard, atmospherically vented, you know, 80% gas furnace all this ductwork snaking around this hot attic space. Around the furnace itself, you're gonna see a lot of this kind of blackness happening. What is that? Microbial growth. Uh, you're gonna see it around the condensate lines, certainly. But even worse, you're gonna find that inside of our ductwork for this exact reason right here. Cold condensing surfaces that are in contact with air that has some humidity in it are gonna develop condensation and that condensation can lead to microbial growth. A bunch of these next photos are from my friend, Sean Harris at IAQ Texas, who regularly goes into Texas houses and checks these systems out. And none of this is good, guys. I mean, look at these inside of duct photos. Remember, this is plastic duct, and yet you're seeing this forming on the inside of the plastic duct, and that is not good. That is some type of microbial growth. Same's true in um, plastic ducts, flex ducts. Uh, duct board is probably almost worse in some respects. This is that kind of fiberglassy type material. Uh, you're gonna see it on plenums, you're gonna see it on supplies, you're gonna see it on returns. It's nasty. The other nasty place you're gonna see this a lot is on ceiling registers. This is a ceiling register, insulation is above this. The drywall was getting cold in that space uh, and had condensation form on it, which you're seeing right here is leading to all kinds of nasty stuff. We do not want that in our Airstream. We don't want that in our houses. Inside of boots uh, can be another place that you're gonna see that. This is probably a, a ductboard boot that we're seeing here. Uh, I mean, this is just gross stuff. We don't want that inside of our Airstream and, and we don't want that in our houses. So ducks outside of condition space, dumb from an IEQ and health perspective and dumb from an efficiency perspective. The other thing that happens though is as we depressurize, the other problems that we've made, the other mistakes we've made in our attic are also contributing to that air infiltrating back into our houses. This is a looking down on a top plate, probably an interior partition. The electrician drew some, drilled some wires in that's a source of an air leak. That's a path for an air leak. Let's talk about solutions. If we're, if we're remodeling or we're building new, one sort of easy thing to do that we've been doing, that I've been doing for you know more than a decade now, is to come into the attic and spray some type of either open or closed cell foam right at the roof line. I would caution you, we don't want any roof leaks with this. We need to make sure that we've got a good watertight roof on the house. We often don't do this on remodels without changing the roof at the same time. We really wanna make sure that we've got a good peel and stick underlayment, that we're not gonna have problems because if that water does leak into there, it's not gonna have the ability to dry like a vented roof would. So we need to be cautious about this, but this can be a way to retrofit. And these are both remodel situations where we've gone in and sprayed. In this case, these are both my houses that I've done in the past. We sprayed open cell foam. You can see on this new construction job, that's also a relatively good way to do it. Put 10 inches of open cell foam in that attic, encapsulate that attic, bring that insulation, that air barrier all the way up to the roof line. And now this ductwork here is running through 
pretty much the same air conditioned space as the rest of the house. Be cautious though, if you're remodeling, you need to make sure that you've got not, not an, an atmospheric, atmospheric vented, vented furnace. Fireplace. You need a 90% internal combustion, or pardon me, sealed combustion furnace, furnace like you you're seeing here. What you're seeing in this photo is that this furnace is drawing in uh, outside like air to combust. And then the flu gases, including all the uh, nasty stuff from those combust. flu gases, is and going out that second pipe. Because it's so efficient, it's a 90% efficient. Plus, it can actually use PVC as the vent. It doesn't need metal anymore, which means we can spray foam right up to that PVC without any problems. So if you're remodeling, remember, you're probably going to have to change out your furnace if you have a metal B vent going through your house. You don't have to use spray foam, though. Here's my personal house. You can see there, there's my attic hole to get uh, up to my house. And all of my ductwork is below the rock wool insulation that I used. Now go back and check out my other videos from Monopoly Framing. I Monopoly framed this. There's no vents into this space. I also purposely did the architecture on the house in a pretty uh, easy to insulate fashion with rock wool bats. And I did some exterior insulation. But here's another house. Uh, this happens to be Trey Farmer's house that I saw years ago that gave me the idea, look, it's pretty easy to use rock wool if we've got a standard uh, joist bay, let's say, or rafter bay to insulate with. And now all this HVAC equipment is within the normal HVAC condition space of the house. And oh, by the way, he's also got a dehumidifier up there to make sure that uh, we're really dropping the humidity in that house and we're not gonna lead to any condensation issues. And here's a simple illustration of this as well. The fluffy stuff now is on the outside. So we've insulated on the exterior of the building. The insulation is here. That's also the air barrier. So now if my ductwork leaks some of that cold air out of the ducts in any way, shape or form, there's no pressure differentials. You know, we're, we're the same pressure in this space as we are in here. And we're not worried about depressurizing the house and forcing air to leak in. We also have very few, not zero, but very few issues with condensation in this type of system as well. So insulating at the roof line can be a great way to go. On a side note, uh, I have moved to recommending closed cell foam, even in the south. This is definitely best practice. It forms a much better air barrier. There's a lot of other benefits. So I do like closed cell foam. This is a house I did a few years ago. You can check out the videos on this. That happens to be uh, ultra pure foam, which is now an Owens Corning product. But let's go to crawl spaces as well. Crawl spaces, if you're gonna have ductwork down in the crawl space, you should treat your crawl space like a short basement. Notice this crawl space that I built a few years ago does not have any vents on the outside. Uh, there's none of those telltale like blocks that you see or blockouts on this because I built this like a short basement. Uh, in this photo before, you can see we did a full uh, vapor barrier all the way through that crawl space, we taped it to the concrete. Then we poured a slab down there. That is a little bit optional if you've got a crawl space. You don't necessarily have to do that if you good, have a good, let's say a stego vapor barrier down there. But what we did then was we went in later with closed cell foam and insulated the entire perimeter walls of this crawl space so that now when we've got ductwork down in that space, we're not worried about that. It's, it's inside the conditioned envelope. Now, if you have a crawl space though, like we built on this house, and in this case, we had zero ductwork, about the only thing we had down there was a couple of wires, then it's no big deal. You know, we can use closed cell foam on the underside of that crawl space, seal it up pretty darn well, and now we're not worried about ducts outside of the condition space. Here's an open cell version we did a few years ago as well. Not my favorite, but it does work. So now that insulation is on the bottom line of the house, right? And then we've got our insulation in the walls and our air barrier there. And we could also have our insulation up here as long as all of our ductwork and our HVAC system is within the air conditioned envelope of the house. Here's just a couple final photos, but let's finish off the video here. The point of the entire story here is it's really dumb to take ducts outside. You don't want any ducts to go outside of your house. If this is a remodel situation, consider figuring out how to reduct your house, bring those ductwork inside. Check out the video that I made recently with my builder friend, Jake Bruton, who regularly does 
vented attics, but has all of his ductwork inside the condition space, or consider a retrofit where now we can get those ducts that were formerly outside inside the house. Guys, thanks for joining me. A little building science, a little rant, a little bit of uh, therapy for me. But trust me, this is something you must do in your houses to build healthy, to build with good indoor air quality, and to build with efficiency. New content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Oh, by the way, new content, 15 videos a week over on buildshownetwork.com. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.